Hi everyone, Sam here, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a seascape which features a breaking wave, some rocks, the soft evening light and some cliffs. It's just a small painting, but I love painting these artworks. They make great little paintings, especially in a frame, and you can also use them as colour studies if you want to do some larger paintings from them. So all round, jolly good. Click the link below, there's some written notes there if you want to have a go at painting this seascape, and feel free to copy the photos and copy the painting if you want to have a go at painting it. But other than that, let's just get straight into the video. Just recently I was going through some of my old photos that I took years ago and I found these coastal scenes of Wellington in New Zealand which gave me an idea for a painting. I have a pile of 30cm by 90cm canvases sat in my studio at the moment which need painting on. So I decided to make this little painting that I'm about to show you proportional to these canvases so that if I did decide to do a big painting I could use the little one as a colour study, if that makes any sense. Before I started my painting I did a few pencil sketches just to design a composition and I'd always recommend you do this because at least then you'll know what your painting looks like before you start it. The sketches don't have to be perfect or anything but it really will help you with your painting process. I'm working on a 12cm by 36cm canvas and it's just loose canvas I'm using here and I've just taped it to a board. Painting on loose canvas is pretty convenient and it can often be cheaper as well. You can also get them mounted and framed afterwards, this ain't a problem. So here I'm using a number one round brush and I start sketching out the composition with burnt sienna mixed with liquid. I'm going to be using liquid throughout the painting as it's a brilliant medium. It speeds up the drying and it also improves the flow of the paint. I love painting small artworks and sometimes I'll just do that and that's as far as the idea will go and then other times I'll develop the idea further and do a larger canvas painting. And I'll use the small painting as a colour study to refer to which is what I did with this one in the end. I'm using oils to paint this seascape, but you could also use acrylics as well if you wanted. The colours I'm using include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, perylene crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. The brushes I'm mainly using include a number 6 and a number 2 flat brush a number one round and a three eighths of an inch dagger brush. So before I begin painting this I'll briefly go over the idea behind the composition. It's obviously quite a long canvas so a little bit more tricky but not too difficult. Anyway, the breaking wave is the main focal area of the painting and then I've loosely employed a circular composition so what I've done here is I've left an opening around the breaking wave and I've subtly put some rocks and other forms to form a loose circle around it. So this helps to just keep the eye on the focal area. The shape of the headlands and cliffs in the background also help point the eye towards the breaking wave. Overall the circle composition is a pretty solid one and it will help keep your eye on the canvas. Whenever I begin a painting I always start by establishing my darkest values first and my shadows. And value refers to how light or dark a colour is. By starting a painting in this way I personally find it much easier to get the tone and saturation of my colours right. So here I start by painting the cloud shadows which is a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, perylene crimson and a lot of titanium white. Then I use these same colours to paint the cliff in the very background but I'm using less titanium white so I can darken the value. And then for the shadows and the rocks in the midground I'm using even less titanium white but again I'm using the same colours. You'll notice that I've been using the same colours so far. Well, this will help to make the painting more harmonious as there's similar colours throughout. 
If when you're starting a painting you're not sure where your light or dark values are, just take your reference photo and switch it to black and white. And here you'll be able to quite clearly see where your darkest darks are and your lightest lights and all the other mid-tones. So in this picture the darkest values are the rocks in the foreground and the shadow in the breaking wave. And then if you have a look at the cliffs in the distance, they're much lighter in value. The lightest value is in the white water in the foreground. Whenever I'm painting an artwork I'm always asking myself is this the right value, i.e. too dark or too light, and does it coordinate well with the other surrounding elements. So with the exception of the rock shadows in the foreground, which I know are going to be in near black, I'm pretty happy that I've got in all my dark values in first. Next I start painting the areas of the clouds that are in light and I mix titanium white with some burnt sienna but then I also allow the shadow mix of the clouds to bleed into the white so it's not completely white. If it's too white it's going to jump forward at me and I don't want that in the painting, I want the clouds to sit back a little. Since I'm also trying to save on brush cleaning, which is the part of painting I most definitely don't enjoy, I'm using my same brush and colour mix that I use in the clouds to paint the white water in the breaking wave and the sea in the foreground. I paint the sky with a combination of ultramarine blue and titanium white. And then after that I just sharpen up some of the shadows in the clouds with my original cloud mix. Next I start blocking in the sea. And this is a combination of ultramarine blue, phthalo green and a little yellow oxide. For the breaking wave I use more yellow oxide in the mixture. And if I need to lighten the value at all then I'll just add a little titanium white to it. I paint the shadows of the breaking wave and white water using a combination of ultramarine blue, a little perylene crimson and titanium white. I also use my original cloud colour mix in the slightly darker areas of the white water in the foreground. I paint the rock shadows with a combination of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and perylene crimson. And then to paint the highlights, I use these same colours, but then I also add titanium white, yellow oxide, and then just to increase the saturation, I also add in a little cadmium yellow and cadmium red. I use my rock highlight mix in the mid-ground also, but I add more titanium white to lighten the value. Now as it's a kind of orangey colour, I do need to desaturate it a little, and I can do this by adding ultramarine blue, as blue is opposite to orange on the colour wheel, and so the two will cancel each other out. I paint the golden sandy rock face in the cliff by using my existing mid-ground rock mixture, but adding more titanium white and a little yellow oxide. Next, I paint the foliage on the mid-ground cliff. There's a mixture of native New Zealand trees and shrubs growing on the cliffs, as well as gorse. So for this, I need to mix a few different shades of an olive green colour. To mix this green, I start with cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. And this creates a pretty intense green and very saturated actually too saturated so we need to knock it back and we can do this by adding something that contains its colour opposite on the colour wheel which is red. So this colour could be perylene crimson or cadmium red or even burnt sienna or all three in a small amount. I also add in a little yellow oxide and if I need to lighten the value I'll add a little titanium white. I painted this seascape in two sittings and now that the blocking in stage is near completion I'm just painting in some highlights on the distant headland there. For this I need to use really desaturated colour so I use a mixture of ultramarine blue, a bit of yellow oxide and perylene crimson and a lot of titanium white 
and it should just look like a murky grey on my palette. But it will have an appearance of a golden yellow when next to the existing shadow mix. And finally I complete the blocking in stage by painting the translucency in the top of the breaking wave and this is just a mixture of titanium white with yellow oxide and a bit of ultramarine blue. I allow the painting to dry before returning to it and here I can start building up some detail before the painting's finished. Now it's only a small painting so I can get away with not adding too much detail and it will still look detailed. That's pretty cool isn't it? So for the rest of this video I'll just focus on some key areas and give you some tips that will help you to paint better seascapes. To make the crest of the breaking wave look like it's curling over, I use my existing wave shadow mix and paint some vertical downwards brush strokes. I then use my foam shadow mix to soften the edges of it. I add more highlight to the white water and the breaking wave in the foreground, but I don't want it to be completely white as I'll risk making it look flat and I don't want that. So in order to make the water look more three dimensional I'm going to save my lightest values right till the very end of the painting. So I darken the white by just adding in a tiny bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and perylene crimson and this will just make it not quite white. Next I paint some reflected light in the shadows of the breaking wave, just adding some lighter areas of colour. You can add drama and interest to your breaking wave by painting some foam patterns as it will give the illusion of turbulent sea. And I've done this here with a number one round brush and my shadow mix. By now the painting is really starting to come together and that's just a question of tidying up the various forms within the painting, re-establishing some of those shapes and adding more highlight to the clouds and the white water in the foreground. Remember I'm saving my lightest values until the end of the painting as this will make it much more three dimensional and realistic. I've lightened the value of the rock faces in the mid ground cliff as I felt it was too dark before. I'm still using the same colours that I was using in the blocking in phase to start with which is a mixture of yellow oxide, burnt sienna, perylene crimson, cadmium red, bit of cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue which will desaturate that whole mixture and of course a lot of titanium white. I also then use the same mixture for the rocks in the foreground but add some highlights by mixing in a little bit more cadmium yellow with some cadmium red and a little bit more titanium white. I sharpen up the forms of the rock shadows in the foreground and then I add some lighter greens to the cliff in the midground just to vary the texture of the foliage. I complete this painting by saving my lightest values until the end and this is in the white water and breaking wave highlights. So here I'm using a mixture of titanium white with a tiny amount of yellow oxide and I'm using a dagger brush to give the illusion of droplets of water in a turbulent sea. And with that the painting is complete. So I'll just quickly talk about what I covered in the video. So we've gone for a circle composition with the breaking wave as the focal area. I've painted my darkest values first when blocking in the painting and then I can use that to gauge the rest of the colours and tonality of the painting. I've consistently tried to use similar colours throughout the painting so it's more cohesive and the painting will read better to the viewer. And then finally I've saved my lightest values until the end of the painting. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up and click the notification bell for more videos. Also feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section or send me an email and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to follow me online, I'm on Facebook, Instagram 
and I'm also on Steam It and Minds. Also, don't forget the link below to the written notes that accompany this video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye!